Greetings everyone, sorry for this small delay. Breathe, pay attention inside, relax, be happy and enjoy yourself. <clears throat> Reviewing last week quickly before we start a new class. Embody yourself, breathe, inhabit, feel, and observe. Last week's class, quickly just in a row, Astima Ja, the bones and the bone marrow. It's two things. It's all the bones. Lastima ja. Snayu, tendons and ligaments. La sica pezel, the muscle. Cheta samhati, nervous system. Koshta, the inner organs. Indriya, the outer organs in the senses. And Charman, the skin. All right, deep breath. Good. <coughs> Let's move on to the next class. The review this week is Nazvin Nivedin Garimashandi. Let's do a a few minutes blurb about Manasvin. Manas is the intellect or the um, the more mechanical part of the mind. Okay. Manas, intelligence, intellect. Vin means in nature. So Manasvin is consciously pay attention to your body. Okay. Manasvin. It is, it doesn't mean incarnate in, in terms of literal definition, but it's the function of transmigrating in your body. Okay. Manasvin. It was uh, translated recently in the last 50 years as mindfulness. Manasvin is Keep your mind on what you're doing or nature so, to be mindful. The word mindful was um, cornered by Master Thich Nhat Hanh in the recent years. So for thousands of years since Sakyamuni Buddha spoke about it, Manasvin did not mean mindfulness. It means to keep the mind on nature, <clears throat> which can be mindfulness. Yeah, I guess. But there's a transmigration aspect of keep your mind on your body or on nature. You breathe and you focus on being in the body. Okay, so that's Manasvin. The trend of the last half century is to say that Buddhism is all about mindfulness. But the word mindful is extremely new. 
So Buddhism was not about mindfulness. It was about awareness and compassion, mostly. Okay. <clears throat> and I'm all for mindfulness, by the way. It's a very nice way to corner all the other concepts. And also, Master Thich Nhat Hanh is an absolutely fabulous, awesome master. If you've never heard about him, he's worth reading. His, his five-step breath, for example, is magnificent. It changes your mind. It changes everything. Really evolutive. So that was for Manasmin. Nivedin. No one in Buddhism speaks of Nivedin. Except us. <laughs> uh, Nivedin. Is one of the words for consciousness. Okay. So there's. Um, Samyan. That's consciousness. Purely as it is. And Nivedin also means consciousness. So what's the difference? Nivedin is massive. It stands, it's, it's visual motor acuity. It is awareness of <clears throat> immediate facts. Okay, so that's, Nivedin is more consciousness of the immediate. And Samyan is like, Consciousness, ah, oh, this, this mystical phenomena, why am I conscious? The hard problem of the observer observing themselves. This kind of consciousness, okay, that's Samyan, okay, which is the highest point of consciousness of the, of the individual being, a human, for example. So, Nivedin, if we analyze a bija, Ni, it starts with Ni. And it ends with in, okay? So it's the intention, the raw intention of nature. And in between ni and in, there's a ved, like in the veda, okay? The revelations. So ni vedin is the revelations of nature or the fact that your mass, your body awakens to its own existence. So Nivedin is consciousness can happen in the in the body's mind, in the Dehachita. Okay. Nivedin is this this animal that, that composes your flesh, your mass, with a mind of its own, it can become aware. And that means it can cultivate virtues. So philosophically speaking, in our mind. And as a soul, we can contemplate compassion, justice and forgiveness, the balance between justice and forgiveness, uh, prudence, yet strength and courage and determination, charity and equity amongst all beings, hope and faith. So all of these virtues, we can think about it, we can cultivate them. But your physical body would remain <clears throat> just this animal trying to fight against its own desires <laughs> or in favor of its desires. So Nivedin is the city of awakening consciousness in nature. Because it is the word awareness in nature. Okay. So when we combine Manasvin and Nivedin, Manasvin, my mind is on my body. That's for our human, that we, are, we usually are in our head, we want the sick in the body. And now that we're in the body with Manasvin, Nivedin, the body awakens. I'm going to practice this for one minute, okay? Manasvin, Nivedin, Manasvin, Nivedin. Manasin, Nivedin, my mind is on my body, and the body awakens to consciousness. Philosophical possibilities happen in the mass of your body. It seems paradoxical, of 
or the animal always driven by instinct, that the animal could consider higher consciousness, higher philosophy. Yeah, it is possible. <coughs> It is December here in Canada, or well, around the world, I guess, mostly. Uh, snow just happened, ice. So I have this normal uh, <clears throat> reaction. It's not a flu. It's not, uh, we call it a rhum. It's, um, it's just normal. Oh, it's time to adapt to, you know, produce more phlegm and eliminate more bacteria. All right, so manasvin nivedin, go in the body and awaken consciousness. <sighs> Just manasvin nivedin. I was uh, driving in my car and I was so much in my head, so much thinking about all things, and, 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 and I, I didn't see it. I I did my stop. Okay, the cars are far enough, so I went. But the other direction did not have a stop. There's a car that was coming that had to not hit the brakes, but slow down dramatically. You know, because in my mind, he was going to stop. It's a stop. My, it was only a two direction stop and the other direction didn't have a stop. And I know about this, this specific corner. It's in my city where I live, my, my village where I live. But I was just so much in my head and it just went on. And of course, he slowed down. There was no risk of accident because the other was also aware. And he just, man, he hung. He was not happy. Obviously, I had done a mistake. But it provoked in me this intense, what if that guy was in his head? Not in the physical world like I was at the same time. He probably would have hit the back of my car, like as I was almost done. It, it could have happened, you know. So basically, when we drive, we have to drive in function that sometimes others are not aware. So we have to drive for others, which is the safest way to drive. Drive within your rights, but be aware that everyone's human and sometimes others do mistakes. And thanks to this, this, um, you know, comprehensive, this, this understandable way of driving, the other guy didn't hit me because he was, he was not focused on his rights. I have the right to continue. I'm going to hit him. He was uh, prudent and angry. <laughs> and it awakened in me this intense, what the hell was I doing? Okay, so that's just, you know, we all have a story like that. Sometimes I drive on a road, it's like, fucking idiot. Uh, no, 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 okay, he's human, it's okay. But I have this, this normal, you know, you want to know about yourself? Look at yourself when you drive. You'll, you'll see your stuff come out, you know. And um, everyone is someone else's idiot at one point. Like, if, if, someone, if you call someone an idiot... You have to know that someone called you an idiot at one point, just for being different. And um, being on the road, awakening me, I have just done a dangerous thing. And the stress in my life was just intense in that period. It's, you know, I still have life going on, but in that period, I think it was two or three years back, it was really intense. Oh, more than three years, but there was the entire pandemic before. So it's like five years ago. Yeah, a good while ago. Awakening me this intense desire. I have to find a way to just stay in the body when I see them in my head. So for me, it was obvious. Keep the mind on the body and have the body active. Okay, so I just went manazin nivedin. Manazin nivedin while driving. And I was physically embodied but also consciousness happened and i went on this fabulous dharma trip like it's like an acid trip without acid like um like a friend of mine two days ago was saying she felt like it was 
uh, like if she was in on ecstasy. I never tried it, but she told me that she had a Dharma trip that felt exactly like being on ecstasy. Because when you have intense revelations, it, it produces a magnificent state of being that did not require chemical, um, artificial production. So I had one of those wow moments of just manasvin nivedin. Manasvin nivedin, just awaken this consciousness. All right, I loved it. So I practiced for a few days, manasvin nivedin. And I wanted to go denser. So a few days after, and now I was aware of the road, aware of myself and aware of the environment. And I started practicing it while cooking, while doing anything. And then let's just do it in meditation. Manazin Nivedi. This fabulous, fabulous week of revelation of um, having a method to ground myself and come back. Manazin Nivedi. So I added on it, Garima Shanti. Garima is the, the third city of Krishna to feel very heavy, to feel all the density of mass. When you touch yourself, uh, your hands, for example, you feel your hands, you feel the hardness of your hand, okay? But that tactile experience is still the nerves of your hand interpreting your brain. So this feeling of density is happening on the vital plane. Actual physical plane is denser than what you have ever touched. Because touch and senses happen in the crossing between the mass and the vital plane. Because it requires your energy and your interpretation in your mind. Okay in your chetta samadhi, in your physical mind. <clears throat> so you can feel the hardness by, by touching. You, you get used to what is dense and hard. But you have never touched physical mass. You only have a perception on the vital plane of what physical mass is probably is. When you have a revelation of garima, you can feel density, Mass, heaviness, 10 times more powerful than what your nervous system gives you with the sense of touch. But it won't be the sense of touch. It can only be done through revelation of pure atomic power, pure mass. And that is the city Garima. Okay? Garima is the experience of the density of the heaviest part of the creation, which is physical mass. <coughs> Garima. And just take the, the feeling of density, the feeling of heaviness, or when you lift weight in a gym, that is also just sensation in your body on the vital plane. Actual mass is 10 times denser and more powerful as a feeling when you awaken to that awareness. So as you practice Garima, it transcends sensations with your nervous system and it goes into the experience of density of mass. Garima. I am 10 times denser than what I've perceived with my senses. Garima. Garima. And that puts you in contact with the actual atomic reality. So if you've done any practice of um, transmutation or, or contemplate the body, but all you have of the body is what you've touched. So you're still doing your contemplation on the vital plane and it will eventually infuse in the physical um, over time. Garima makes you aware of actual mass. And it is denser than what you perceive with your nervous system. Okay. 
By practicing Garima, you gain access to actual physical planes. So whatever supernatural operation or whatever contemplation of the body you will do after training Garima will sing in your mass if you awakened yourself at that level. So Manazu Nivedin Garima. Manazvin Nivedi Garima. Manazvin Nivedin Garima. Manazvin Nivedin Garima. Manazvin Nivedin Garima. And breathe. And through the city of Garima, gaining access to the densest of the densest, denser than what you can perceive with the nervous system, which is stuck on the vital plane. It's, it's information in the nerves. Then you're really massive. You're really aware of the body. And that gives you access to the body like when you do a reiki on yourself or someone when you do prayer when you do a ritual and you want to manifest something physically garima opens that gate into the physical realm because you transcend the limit of perception manazin nivedin garima my mind is on the body the body awakens to consciousness garima I am aware of actual density. When you do the practice at home, you do five minutes each individually, then you do them together. Okay. One more step, Shanti. On the surface, Shanti means peace. I am at peace with mass. I am peace with the world. I am in peace with my body. But Shanti, if you take my class on Shanti a few years back, it's, it's one of those videos. Shan is manifest. T is harmony. Okay. The T of balance and E of the, the I of highest intention. So Shanti is manifest harmony. Shanti means more than peace. It will bring peace. It manifests balance. It manifests equilibrium, harmony. So with the access to actual mass, it will bring peace in the world, starting with your own world, inside, your body. But it will not stop there. It will be anywhere there is mass, which is everywhere around you. Shanti manifests. And the more at peace philosophically, the more at peace you are with what happens, this is Shanti. I will accept what happens. I will make peace with what manifests. The more you gain the power, Shanti, is I will manifest peace and harmony. So to gain the power of Shanti, you have a, a work of personal ego to do. To accept what happens. To make peace with what is turbulent. To make peace with what requires making peace with then you have the power to manifest more peace. Okay. To accept Shanti, <clears throat> you know, it's not to wait for everything to be calm. You first have to make peace as a choice. Accept the manifestations that happen. And with this state of being, your Shanti will switch in giving you the Shanti power. If you accept Shanti, accept what happens, you will be able to manifest harmony.
you will gain the power of Shanti as you accept how it comes to you from the karmic planes through events. Okay? So practice Shanti to, to gain this ability to manifest harmony and balance. But it also comes as you accept the turbulence when it doesn't seem to be harmonious. So it's a gain. It's not a contradiction. Let's say it's a moral paradox. I don't know how to call it. Let's say paradox. It's cool. It's when you accept turbulence that you actually have the power to manifest peace. And if you fight turbulence and you want to manifest peace by not accepting turbulence, turbulence wins. <clears throat> anyway, see how far it goes. It's, it's pretty awesome. Shanti. Manazvin nivedin garima shanti. Manazvin, my mind on the body. Nivedin, the body awakens. Garima. The awareness of pure mass, Shanti, bring harmony in the physical world. Manasvin, Nivedi, Garima Shanti. Manasvin, Nivedi, Garima Shanti. Manasvin, Nivedi. Gariba Shanti Manasvin Nivedin Garima Shanti <clears throat> Manasvin Nivedin Garima Shanti This is a practice to simply be so in the body. It is beautiful. It is fantastic. It cultivates such an incarnate state of truth and simplicity. Some feeling of mastery would come after that. Simplicity. Just being in this revealed beauty of the world. I asked when we were talking about um, enlightenment, me and my father, when we were, when I was younger, we were younger. I told him about enlightenment and how I experienced it. And he says, enlightenment is catastrophic peace. <laughs> I loved I love the poetry of his word. It is catastrophic peace. It's even more. It's even more funny how he said it in French. C'est une paix catastrophante, which translated it is a catastrophizing peace. <laughs> it's just so beautiful in that it's peace in this terrible sense and magnificent sense. Yeah, this is how I put in words uh, in Sidi Manasven Nivedin Garima Shanti. It, it takes some training, but eventually you are just there. Simple. And from this feeling of mastery mastery is relative and subjective but from this kind of feeling of mastery of simple presence in the manifest world powerful and dense like a mage should be you think rasavada alchemy kanakayota the golden light You'll go for concepts like those. Siddhya Roga Nam Siddhya Roga Rib. You will go for manifesting pure health. 
Sadajiva Amritayus, the eternal life of the fountain of you, stuff like that. The philosophical stone. The philosophical stone, philosophical state of mind, stone, dense. And that will give you access to producing the supernatural effect of pure densification of consciousness in the body. Right? All these other mantras I just said, find them. <laughs> Go back in time. Rasavada is an interesting one. <clears throat> it's the one that logically follows the series. Manasvin Nivedin Garimashanti. You just do that. And eventually, Rasavada. Alchemy. <clears throat> I'm happy that I gave this class with all this uh, excess of phlegm that I'm coughing a bit. I don't have a throat ache, but I have to cough the the goo. It feels like muddy brick coming up. <laughs> um, to to get rid of the illusion that once we have all this power, we're immortal and perfectly healthy. <laughs> Health situation will happen. <laughs> okay, don't worry about it. We're still human. But it is extremely... Uh, is extremely uh, peaceful and, and almost ecstatic physically to practice the philosophical stone Manasvin Nivedin Garimashanti Manasvin Nivedin Garimashanti Rasavada And an example, once you have access to this, this very dense and beautiful being in the body. Asti Maja Snayu Lasika Pezel Cheta Samhati Koshta Indriya Charman Dehachita. And the body just whoosh, rushes with manifesting power, rebuilding, healing. <laughs> All right. So now doing these reviews for the end of the year of what I taught this year helps you see how you can play with them, how you combine them and how fantastic they are. <laughs> All right. Love you guys. Peace.